we want to find all the values of x such that the given series would converge, which is called the interval of convergence of the power series. We'll begin by applying the ratio test given here, where we know this limit must be less than one in order for the series to converge. This will give us an open interval of convergence, and then we'll test the endpoints to see if the series converges or diverges at the two endpoints. This information will give us the interval of convergence. So before we apply the ratio test, notice that a sub n would be equal to negative one raised to the power of n times ten to the nth times x to the nth divided by the square root of n plus two. Well, we are taking the absolute value here, so we could leave off negative one to the nth, but I'm gonna go ahead and show that. And now for a sub n plus one, we would have negative one to the power of n plus one times ten to the power of n plus one times x to the power of n plus one divided by, we'd have the square root of n plus one plus two. And now we'll find the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus one divided by a sub n, but instead of dividing by a sub n, we'll multiply by the reciprocal instead. So first we have a sub n plus one times the reciprocal of a sub n. Now let's begin simplifying. Looking at the factors of x, notice how we have n plus one factors of x in the numerator and n factors of x in the denominator. We have one more factor of x in the numerator. So this simplifies to one, this simplifies to one factor of x. The same thing happens for base ten. We have one more factor of ten in the numerator. So this simplifies to one, this simplifies to ten. And then for negative one, negative one to the nth simplifies to one. We have one remaining factor of negative one in the numerator. So now we have the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of, we'd have negative ten x times the square root of n plus two in the denominator, we just have the square root of n plus one plus two. Now looking at this limit as n approaches infinity, notice how we have the square root of n here and we have the square root of n plus one here. The plus one is irrelevant as n approaches infinity. So we can think of the denominator as having n to the power of one half and think of the numerator as having n to the one half as well. So we can think of the degrees of the numerator and denominator as being the same, and therefore this limit is equal to the ratio of leading coefficients, which in this case would be negative ten x over one, or just negative ten x. So this is equal to the absolute value of negative ten x, which if this is going to converge, must be less than one. So if we solve this absolute value inequality, we can determine the open interval of convergence. So we have the absolute value of negative ten x must be less than one. Since the absolute value of negative ten is ten, we can write this as ten times the absolute value of x less than one, dividing by ten. We have the absolute value of x less than one-tenth, which means x is less than one-tenth and x is greater than negative one-tenth. So the open interval of convergence is from negative one-tenth to positive one-tenth, but it still may converge at one or both endpoints, so now we'll test the endpoints. So first, when x equals negative one-tenth, we would have the summation from n equals one to infinity of negative one to the nth times ten to the nth times x to the nth, which would be negative one-tenth to the nth, divided by the square root of n plus two. Let's simplify this. If we have ten to the nth times negative one-tenth to the nth, because they're both being raised to the nth power, we can write this as ten times negative one-tenth to the nth, which would be negative one to the nth. So this is equal to negative one to the nth. 
So negative one to the n times negative one to the nth would be negative one to the power of n plus n or two n. So we have negative one to the two n divided by the square root of n plus two. But notice for all values of n, we're raising negative one to an even power, which means this will always be positive one. So this simplifies even more to the summation from n equals one to infinity of just one divided by the square root of n plus two. Now to determine if this converges or diverges, notice how this resembles the series where we have the summation from n equals one to infinity of one divided by the square root of n, which we can write as the summation of one divided by n to the one half, which we know diverges by the p-series test with p equals one half. So now we'll apply the limit comparison test to hopefully show this series here is also divergent. So to apply the limit, to apply the limit, to apply the limit comparison test, to apply the limit comparison test, we'll now find the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, which is one divided by the square root of n plus two. Instead of dividing by b sub n, multiply by the reciprocal, so we'd have times the square root of n over one. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of the square root of n over the square root of n plus two. And notice as n approaches infinity, this would approach positive one, which is positive and finite, and therefore because this series was divergent, our series is also divergent. So to summarize this, we'll say, by the limit comparison test, the series diverges at x equals negative one-tenth. And now for x equals positive one-tenth, we would have the summation from n equals one to infinity of the same thing we have here, except this would be positive one-tenth, which means we'd have negative one to the nth times positive one to the nth divided by the square root of n plus two. Notice how one to the nth is always just positive one. So we have the alternating series where we have the summation from n equals one to infinity of negative one to the nth divided by the square root of n plus two. So if we want to apply the alternating series test, notice that a sub n is equal to one divided by the square root of n plus two, which is always greater than zero. The limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals zero. And notice as n increases, these fractions will get smaller and smaller because the denominators would be increasing. So a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n. And therefore, by the alternating series test, the series converges at x equals positive one-tenth. So the series diverges at negative one-tenth, but converges at positive one-tenth, and therefore the interval of convergence would remain open on negative one-tenth, but would be closed at positive one-tenth. So this is the interval of convergence, and therefore for the homework question, the series is convergent from x equals negative one-tenth. It does not include the left endpoint because the interval is open on negative one-tenth, so this is no. Two x equals positive one-tenth. It includes positive one-tenth, so the right endpoint is included, so here we have yes. I hope you found this helpful.